senior. Mazzello. I'm a senior. I played football and I throw discus. It's really interesting to like have a student section and be in a student section because you see um, like professional sports and it's like everyone's cheering for you know everyone. But in a student section, you have this congregation of people, uh, like high schoolers, like cheering on like their friends and like people they don't even know. And it's it's really cool, and especially being in the student section, like it's like amazing. Like I get like I can't even think of a word. It's like magical almost. Every time I run out the tunnel to hear everybody chant and yelling because. I feel like they, they really give us the energy that we need. It, it means a lot to the football players when it's when it's packed. I like the hype. I like being under pressure. I, I like succeeding when everyone's watching. Um, just their support. Like, it's awesome just hearing them cheer. And like, also, I really enjoy hearing them like kind of banter with the other the other student section. And I, I find that super funny. Everyone is super positive and brings us a lot of energy. I think not having student sections was like tough for everyone, especially like the seniors last year. Um, but I think it made this year just that much better. <sighs> well, I mean, having no fans, it just was weird, honestly. It was really quiet. It felt more like practice. It was really strange. It was weird hardly having anybody there. Just like just our parents. It was it was kind of sad because there's no energy there from the students that us as a team has to bring it out. Obviously football is still football, but without the fans, it just didn't feel right. It was, I mean. And so I think that COVID really like enforced the want of a student section because everyone's super hype and coming together. The great part about the student section is really how loud it is. Um, I love being in the student section at football games. Get loud! <laughs> yes, Joe. Can I take a bathroom break? Yes. Miss Reynolds, can I go to the restroom? Let's get Audrey. See? Put it all by here. Kids born in 2000 illegal, and no one likes American Eagle. And I keep running into the people that I used to know. Nobody remembers the Beatles, and everything turned out to be evil. And I'm stuck in the eye of the needle.
If you like this performance, make sure you check out the rest of our video on BVN Broadcast on YouTube. And if you want to see us live, make sure you come to the GSA Showcase, November 12th from 6.30 to 8 in the BVN Commons. Besides just live music, there will also be artwork on display and pride pins for sale. It's $5 at the door, and we hope to see you there November 12th in the BVN Commons, 6.30 to 8. Good morning, Mr. Johnny. Jeez. <laughs> 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 Mr. Quentin Nutt, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Yarks. All right, first question. Who on the team would you trust to date your sister? Well, it ain't you. Uh, probably Nick Reinig, honestly. I'll let Nick Reinig. Probably Nick. Um, Nick Reinig. Probably Louie. 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 Yeah. Who is most likely to get put on academic suspension? I could see, I could see Grant. Grant Garberg. Grant. Oh, Grant. Grant Garberg. Drew Nugent. Uh, Drew Nugent. Who is most likely to make the team do sprints? Uh, definitely Lars. You. Lars. Mm. Lately, Lars. Either you or Mohez. Oh, Luke Mohez. Luke Mohez. Mohez. Who is most likely to become a soccer coach? Um, definitely Eden K. Eden. Eden. Eden K. Eden. None of us are responsible enough. Yeah, no one. Who is most likely to be on The Bachelor? Probably Merritt. 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 Who is most likely to get pulled over? Uh, Aziz. Aziz. He's a terrible driver. Aziz. Me. Jackson. 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 What is the worst part of practice? The one lap in warm-ups. Yeah. First warm-up lap. Warm-ups. The first lap. The warm-up. Oh, the warm-up, because we got to run. The warm-up lap. Uh, the warm-up lap. <laughs> Do you need to go to college to be successful? I interviewed students at BVN to find out. I think that if you want to pursue your education, then you should go to college, but I don't think that college is necessarily the key to the door that is a happy life for you. I think it really depends. I think college is kind of a little overblown, but I still think it's important. Elitism, I don't like the elitism that comes with like the whole college thing. Right now college like just isn't really realistic for most people because it's become like so different from what it used to be. It's really expensive. I would like to go to college and be an electrical engineer. It sounds boring, but I think that because it sounds boring to me, that means job security. I would love to do van life, like live in a van. I am not sure yet. I might take a gap year. I'm probably going to go to college in Colorado, like in Boulder. I'm not going to college. I'm going to college. After getting the opinions from students at BVN, I went off to interview one of BVN's former students to find out how important a college degree really is. My name's Hannah Beth and I am a hairdresser. Um, okay, so I went to Blue Valley North and my experience there was really good. Some of my interests when I went there was broadcast technology and I also liked a lot of the art classes that I took. I went to college for about three years. I went to K-State and I went to KU. And I liked both schools. I switched programs a lot though because I don't feel like I ever really got a good handle in high school on what exactly it was that I wanted to do. I would say that there was a lot of pressure at BBN to go to college. I don't feel like I was ever really asked like what other options, you know, might you want to take instead of college. It was always kind of the question of 
where are you going to college? So I was in my third year of college at K-State and it was a great school, but like I said, I was just kind of aimless there. I was in a fine arts degree and I sort of thought, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this degree. So I dropped out of college my third year. I got online and it, sounds kind of funny now, but I took a personality test online, like a career personality test, and it said that I would be really good in a trade. I've come to realize that my favorite part of being a hairdresser is definitely the people. Um, I've always been a people person, but I didn't realize how much the people aspect of this job was gonna matter to me until I started building a clientele. And you start really getting to know your clients, and I mean, I know everything about my clients like they are friends just as much as they are clients and at the end of the day the world needs hairstylists the world needs estheticians the world needs electricians they need plumbers they need culinary chefs the world needs tradespeople and it's something that gets so overlooked because people think that maybe we're underpaid or something but it's not the truth and there's a lot of freedom in those jobs so where can students who are interested in other options find helpful resources? After an interview with Ms. Newman, I found out about Blue Valley's Career Ready program. Well, we actually have really kind of two different paths that you can look at if you wanted to look at taking classes outside of Blue Valley North at Johnson County Community College. One of those opportunities would be to look at a career technical program, uh, such as welding, automotive, um, electrician, the other opportunity is a dual credit opportunity. So what that means is that on the dual credit side, you would go to Johnson County Community College for your full schedule. So rather than taking classes at Blue Valley North, you go there and you're really pursuing a two-year associate's degree. To find more information about the Career Ready program, visit the BVN Counseling Canvas page. From there, you can find numerous links that will tell you more about the concurrent credit courses. I need a pumpkin. Don't know if we can use these, because they're uh, not real. Can't find any pumpkins. Where are the pumpkins? See that, see that truck over there? Yeah, that guy, that guy missed the pumpkins. Where are the pumpkins? Where are they? Where are the pumpkins? <laughs> Here's some pretty nice pumpkins. So dumb. Anyway, we get a cart. Oh, no, you don't get it. I don't think it's street legal. This guy's been some stuff. This is just a really oversized lemon. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> to the help. <laughs> See all these homes are having fun being together, it's like family, except for him. He's social distancing. We don't know what he has. Some really weird sounds, some smells going on over there. So we are finally awake. Hi, welcome to Cooking with Martha Stewart. Today, we're carving pumpkin. <laughs> we have to use some care. <laughs> you have to make the sound effects natural. May have run into a problem. So I bought a secondary knife. That's why I bought a label. Okay. 
can't have any more complications. It's a comically large knife I could find. It's gonna cut like butter. Never mind, it's gonna cut like a pumpkin, guys. What are you thinking? This is a big knife, and I do not like using it. Very much monster. Reason. I you know, think they glue this part, right? My mom's gonna be like, oh, I wonder what the knives are working. And she'll watch the video and be like, mm -hmm. pumpkin, pumpkin, open up. <gasps> I think this is a secret most people don't think about. It's just. <laughs> Leave it in here? Do we really need to take all of it out? I don't think it's necessary. Now it's time to start carving. This is so dangerous. Is this how you carve pumpkins? <laughs> Pumpkin, everyone? <laughs> I did it! Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. So guys, it's how you make a pumpkin. <laughs> nice shot.